All right, welcome back to the program. Okudeli Ego, who is the Senior Vice President at Carrier Asset Management, is joining me right now for us to discuss Ponzi schemes and what you must do to protect yourself uh, from, uh, you know, losing your money or, in fact, not even losing your money, not investing at all. So once someone comes to you with an investment, your, your antenna just rises. So that is what the show is about uh, today. Welcome to you, Okudeli, and uh, good to have you on the show. <laughs> All right, Okudi, let's get started. And I will start by uh, saying at least the origin of Ponzi or the Ponzi schemes. We do know that there was a man called Charles Ponzi uh, that conducted Ponzi schemes. Um, I think then he said uh, he promised investors a return of 50% on what he called international mail coupon. And that this was in the 1920s. So it's as far back as that time. Are you shocked and surprised that even though the, w the world has developed than what it was in 1920, so people are still falling prey to it. Don't also forget that we had an incident some years ago in the United States, uh, Madoff. Madoff. I, yes, I can't remember his first name. Mm -hmm. oh, he's died now in jail. Madoff. Yeah, yes, Madoff. Yes, Madoff. Even tricked celebrities of your money and all of that. Are you surprised that this, these kinds of schemes still exist and how it has even revolutionized? No, I'm not surprised because human beings are extremely very mm. dynamic and they will keep uh, trying to be innovative, try to repackage um, um, schemes, fraudulent schemes. Ponzi's are indeed financial fraudulent schemes that uh, uh, relies on deception and representation of facts. So people will always be innovative in a way to have, uh, uh, to just scheme off people of their hard earned money or scam people. So the, the key thing about it is that the deception and it is the intention to defraud people. So have human beings changed from defrauding people? No. People will always find schemes. That's why you have 419, you have Yahoo, Yahoo. So it's all forms of uh, schemes to defraud people. Mm. So it, could, it will keep changing from one form to the other, being repackaged in one form. Now, when it started, it was a mere coupon. Now it comes in the way of uh, online investments. Uh, it comes in the way of all manner of schemes. But the underlying principle is that there is deception in it, and there is a motive to defraud people. Mm. Now, if you take a look at the revolutionize, revolutionization, if there's anything like that, you know, <laughs> you know, or the metamorphosis, let me use another word, the metamorphosis of the Ponzi schemes, what areas do you think that it has gravitated to more, especially in Nigeria? It started by Charles Ponzi as a male coupon in promising investors a 50% return. But in Nigeria, what kind of colorations are you seeing? And I know why I asked that question. Uh, because I, I, I had a show, I think sometime in April, was it in April of late March, where I did talk about even real estate. And a lot of Nigerians are beginning to lose money around real estate and investment. And for me, from even where I see it, I see that Ponzi schemes are also coming in that way mm -hmm. you know it's one of the best shows we've had reviews this year so in case you've not watched that go on our youtube page uh youtube channel and watch so what kind of you know areas are we seeing these ponzi schemes okay what you must uh, understand from our statistics nigeria has a huge uh, youthful population and these youthful populations are technology service so almost every every member of that demography has a smartphone so there's a huge market of people who are socially active online. Now, being socially active online does not mean that they understand the content or can diag uh, diagnose. diagnose the content to, you know, sieve out facts from, you know, uh, fro um, misrepresentations. So we we'll now see that we have a culture, a society that now believes that everything they see online is true. So and the the, the social media has kind of catalyzed transmission of information from one form. So within seconds, something goes viral. People are now saying, ah, I saw it online, it's authentic. Mm. So, the, the, so the, there's a large market for these uh, perpetrators of this crime and relying on technology and relying on the naivety you know, of, of a lot of Nigerians who are online. A lot of people who are online, in my opinion, shouldn't be. Because one, they're not even, they're not even uh, uh, conscious of the security implications of being online. They're not even protecting their password very well. So you now see a lot of accounts getting hacked and people 
uh, fraudulent guys mm, using those advantage. hacked accounts to also perpetrate fraudulent uh, activities and scam people off through different money. platforms, through different the platforms. WhatsApp platforms. So I, I encourage time. anybody who must be online to mm. first of all be sure of your identity and protect your identity online. Implement two-factor authentication, authentication. At, at all times and be sure that you know what you are doing online. The online community, the internet is a showroom basically mm. what happens at the back end what structures do we have at the back end is important that we know we must ask critical questions that you saw something online does not mean it's authentic authentic yes i always see if you know <laughs> it's like i'm a disciple of sniffing <laughs> both what they call fake news <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know news that is authentic when for me I, i've always said it on the show a lot of people know me you can't just be sending all those whatsapp messages or all those whatsapp mm. all those videos nah I, you won't even find me sending it to people. But once I see things that are a bit fake, I take it as a responsibility to investigate. And when I investigate it's fake, I'll just, you know, propagate that information and say, guys, beware, especially things around scam. Now, if we take a look at the current landscape in Nigeria, a lot of people have fallen prey to Ponzi schemes. Facts. I'm surprised that more people still fall into these schemes after the MMM saga. MMM was what year, Ukuli? Can you remember? 20 20, 2015, 2017. Yes, about that time. And I remember that I did shows on, this is what I've heard, guys. Don't do this. Ukuli, do you know that I got death threats? People were sending me death messages, threatening messages that, now is it your money? Now your mo you do understand. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't say I told you guys, but I had to sympathize with a lot of people uh, that lost our money and a lot of young people. After that MMM, you're still seeing that a lot of people still falling prey. The AEFCC, I think brought out a notice, I don't know, a wanted guy, I can't remember his name now, something Max. Something. Max Odom. Yes, MBA Forex. MBA Forex. And if I tell you a story, if a, a lady that I buy stuff from somewhere here in Abuja, some time ago, was it last year when I went to her, she told me uh, that she's investing in this M something MBA Forex. I was like, what is MBA Forex? I told her, just try and get out your money now. That that's a sponsor scheme. She said, no, 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 no. That in fact, no, in dollars, oh, did you see it? Ah, but like that she has even invested the money, bought her money from the bank for her child. And I was trying to convince this young woman, take this thing out. But she was like, no, that she, I was like, are people really <laughs> normal? So how do you think, well, why do you think that Nigerians are still falling prey? What are the factors? Is it greed or a lot of people will say, oh, we want to make ends meet and all of that, even against my advice in this situation. And now the thing has gone belly up. I found myself in a similar situation, you know, a couple of times, and um, even from close family members who <laughs> have had bent on doing MMM. Even that. your family members, we have <laughs> someone like you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the number one thing we need to understand is first is. Uh, that ignorance is expensive. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are ignorant about um, the financial system, how the financial system works, how money works, um, money management skills, personal finance skills. You know, so I think that uh, platforms like yours should do more in projecting financial literacy. Mm -hmm. In fact, financial literacy should be a fundamental knowledge. Everybody who, just like you know English and math, should also know, um, be, be literate in financial matters. You know. A lot of people don't, can't even um, study and understand their bank statements. Cannot relate with the charges they see on the account and what how it is uh, the basis of the computation of that charge. So we need to have a lot of a lot more people knowledgeable about the financial system and what works, how products are structured, and all that. So what we are seeing is the outcome of ignorance. Is it really, uh, is it, or can you attribute it's one of it the factors. Uh -huh, because it's one of the factors, but it's a primary factor. Because if you understand that uh, um, if somebody is making promises to you to give you 50% per month, and you understand how money is made, how money works, and the financial system, you'll be curious to know what is the underlying asset. What is the production activity backing these claims? If you do that research, you'll find out that this scheme, this scheme is likely not sustainable. So what fuels Ponzi schemes? We know the way it's operated. No, like, yes, like a pyramid. Yeah. What, f what fuels it? Because what gives Nigerians that invest in such Ponzi schemes the, the chests, 
you know, the confidence to invest because they will say, ah, that skip a spade of Kudili, ah, my own is next week or no. what? How do these Ponzi schemes work? The operators of it. One is the, 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 the perpetrators of um, Ponzi schemes pry on greed. Nigerians, largely, anybody who has participated and who is knowledgeable and has participated in Ponzi schemes may have been very greedy. Now, they, they, there is no sustainable investment that will promise you more than 24% per annum. 24? Per annum. That across, to, across investment or asset classes? By, 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 by the average uh, indexes and the measures of measurement that we've seen, you know, most asset classes, is hand, is, it would be unclear to see anyone giving you more than 24% per annum. So if you see any scheme promising more than 2% per month, it's a red flag. It's not sustainable. They may, they may be an underlying. Hmm? Some will say 50%. Give me your money. Next week, you get 50%. Or That's a red flag. That's a flag flag. There's an underlying scam that you're not seeing. Now, you just mentioned about the market doing year to day 17%. Mm -hmm. There's no guarantee that the market will close at 17%. Yes. It could, come, it could turn ne negative. Yeah. And in investment, there is no <coughs> explicit guarantees. It could also turn positive. It could also turn positive. Mm. So for somebody telling you that I'm guaranteeing that I'll give you 50% per month, that's translated by 600% per year. That is not feasible. Okay. So uh, yeah. the another factor that have contributed to have uh, fueled um, um, the, the, the Ponzi scheme scenario that we are seeing today is still the social media and the social media influencers and celebrity endorsements. Thank you for bringing that fact up. For the fact that a celebrity or a public person comes out to endorse. They are not authorities in yes, the act of To investing. endorse it, and I've seen a lot of them fail mm -hmm. to say, oh, invest in this thing or do this, and that does not mean that the stuff is authentic. In fact, those people are preying on your intelligence to get popular people that you really believe in. And those you know, social admire. media have pecuniary interest most times. Mm. Was the endorsement free? They Were they the person. So their interests are the variance with yours. So another factor that I've seen that I've foiled is, is the, uh, the endorsement also by religious leaders. You know, Nigeria is a very religious country, and people believe what their daddy, their geo have said. <laughs> so when you see somebody taking pictures and the geo getting blessings from the geo, you now feel that the person is doing something uh, uh, very transparent and accountable because your geo has endorsed it or has anointed him or her. Fact, so once it comes with some yeah. form of religious coloration, please take a flee. So I, and, and the, the, the also too is that I don't know what the psyche of Nigerians is, but there's this belief that uh, regulation does not matter. That's a force. Regulation is key. Regulation is very key. You know, so um, uh, you can't, anybody telling you anything to the contrary is telling you a lie. You must look at investment products that are properly regulated by the regulatory bodies. OK. Um, I hope uh, we'll get back to the role of regulators in a bit. But you've, I know you've been saying it now, at least within what you've said, at least like four tips that you need to look out for. Are there other tips that Nigerians need to look out for when being asked to invest uh, in, you know, into a product or make an investment that at the end of the day may turn out to be a Ponzi Fine. scheme? Fine. Also, the, the, the operating structure of the firm asking you to bring money. The operating structure. How, what is the operating structure? Mm -hmm. What's the legal structures on ground that the firm that is asking you to operate? Who is the board? Who are the management? Is it a one man or a man on the wife? What is the antecedent? What have they done in the past? But some Ponzi schemes will cleverly put this together. Yes. Yeah, but most they of the cleverly put most of the together. Ponzi schemes we've seen do not do really not have, have a, a, a diversified ownership structure. They do not have uh, a, a, a solid operating structure that have uh, delegated management. You know, this person is in charge. The CFO. This is the chief accountant. This is the this. You know, so you don't see that management team. You don't see the operating structure. So you are not uh, conversant with how decisions are taken. Decisions are just taken by one person. So and 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 they try as much as possible not to uh, disclose their operations and the activities, the underlying activities they do on daily basis. So the operating structure is also very key. 
Are there other things that you also need to look out for? You've spoken about celebrities. Uh, you've talk, talked about the operational structure. I also need to t bring this I also in think that people, before you ask for any investment fund or scheme that's asking you to bring one of them, demand for the audited accounts. Demand of, for the audited accounts of the company? Yes, and demand if they first analyze the auditor's report, analyze the firm of the auditors. Does the auditor have anything to lose? Do they have a reputation to lose? How about, how, about, how about for Ponzi schemes that have come up? Uh, because there will be companies, and I've seen a lot of people tell me, oh, Nancy, that this company is registered in CSC. Registration in CSC is, not, is nothing. Registration in CSC is just, to, it Anybody does not can confer register. anything. Anybody can register. Yeah. And today, you don't even need um, other directors. You can even register on, on, as, on, on your own. On your Units, own. Yes. So that you have a CSC registration does not confer anything, does not confer authenticity on that scheme. So if you want to do investment business and you have gotten CSC, just, just one step. Have you gotten CBN uh, license? Have you gotten SEC registration? Are your Very staff, SEC passport individuals, have SEC reviewed your uh, key management staffs and given them um, um, the sponsored leaderships to operate? Because before you operate any of the SEC license operations, you must have a minimum number of sex sponsored individuals. I need basically process mm. to to get in such individuals for your firm to operate. So have those person um, gotten those regulatory requirements? So those that's important. Having having a, a CAC registration or school from EFCC is not a guarantee. It's not does not confer authenticity or comfort for anybody who wants to join that scheme or operating that scheme you can't just start collecting money from people without the regulators being thank you yeah being an investment banker or being you can't just do that and also one thing we also want to do is that um, when you see these ponzi schemes they come with no manner of structure that is a hybrid and blood either they call you a partner they call you an investor or they call you the, the investment in the capital market is just two types is either a debt instrument or an equity instrument so what are you doing is it a debt instrument? Is it an equity? What are you selling? What are you selling? That What's the structure? The, if the returns. Mm. People will say so they are selling gold in some or they are mining gold or they are. Yeah, but I don't care what you are but what am who am I? Am I an equity investor or am I a debt investor? Uh, have I invested in your debt instruments? And if I'm going to invest in your debt instrument and you have raising debt, for instance, I should also be comfortable and ask for a credit rating. Mm -hmm. You know, so let that person ask and demand for a credit rating. Let that person subject him or myself to a credit, uh, a credit rating agency who will now assess the, the capacity of that firm to meet obligations as at when due. It's very key. Countries are rated, institutions are rated, and that rating score is important. And then when companies op raise money, it's, it shouldn't be li limitless. You must raise money for a purpose. And you must, uh, there must be a cap. When, empty, when yeah. companies go to IPO to raise funds, they raise X amount of money. And they will disclose in their filings, I'm going to use X percentage for this, I'm going to use X percentage for this, I'm going to use this for this. But what we see is just a limitless quest to grab and take in more funds and more funds. Capital raise is not limitless. There must be a cap. Now, the question also is, for those that are falling prey of these sponsor schemes that have lost money, like this MBA Forex now mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. on, and I guess others will be on even mm -hmm. as we speak now, mm -hmm. the question will be, how will those people get their money back? I can't remember if uh, MMM, <laughs> if they got their monies back. I think the, the founder died, so I think the son of yeah. the founder of MMM also, also passed. So how, uh, are they, in, how will... In Nigeria, uh, the... the from what I have gathered, from what I have learned, and from my research, in Nigeria, operating um, a Ponzi scheme is illegal. So both the perpetrator, or the promoter, and those who are investors in that schemes are engaging in illegal activity. So you, the contract you have entered into may not be enforceable in the court of law. And I hear there has been uh, court rulings that even when monies were recovered, they were remitted to the federal government, not to the investors in the scheme. So to that extent, I don't know what 
um, lies ahead for those who are victims of these schemes, if there is any hope for them. Because ab initio, they have, get, have gotten themselves involved in an illegal operation. And we've seen majority of even the perpetrators fleeing the country, and we don't even know where. But they if are. you understand the dynamics of the uh, of the scheme, how it works, there's no reinvestment. It only plays on is the game of large numbers. Yeah. You get more people, use it to pay the initial ones, and you hope that you get more and more people. Once you are not able to uh, keep increasing the numbers to meet the demands of those who have been there, the, the scheme will crash. So it's not in, in any way a sustainable scheme. So it's just a matter of time scheme will crash. Does it also surprise you the quantum of money that is also being, <laughs> you know, uh, that go through this, these sponsor schemes? For this MBA Forex, for example, 213 billion Naira. We, I know that Nigerians have lost with different popular Ponzi schemes that come on board, 18 billion, 300 billion and all of that. I'm like, oh, so Nigerians have this kind of money. And you're looking at the, you know, the bottom of the pyramid, as it were, why are they investing in these schemes? Because of some of the things you've said, ignorance, greed. Perhaps a lot of more people also want economic stability and all of that. Doesn't it behove on us really as, you know, as Nigerians or perhaps for regulators or government to create alternative forms of investment? Because when I was thinking of this, I said, okay, if these kind of monies are available in Nigeria, how can we channel those monies into legit businesses. I know the capital market has different products and all of that, but is, is there a, an innovative way to do these things so that we can get these monies from Nigerians and they indeed have legit return on investment? Okay, now no, one, one part I would say is that, uh, yes, if you, even if you mention 213 billion Naira has been lost to the Ponzi scheme, it's infinitesimal compared to what we have as to the depositors in the bank balance sheets. Yeah. The basically all the top top um, top top tier banks have over um, have over two trillion in deposits. So compare this figure to what we have in deposits. Now, when you look at the collective investment schemes, which we are the Musha funds belong to, is now in trillions. So you see, compare this number to what we have in regulated mm, markets. Collective investment scheme, mm -hmm. which ordinarily these Ponzi schemes try to mimic or try to the other, the returns they, they promise are way above what the reality or the, what the market can provide, and they don't want to subject themselves to regulation. For the collective investment scheme, are properly regulated, and we have seen month-on-month -month increase in asset under management. So we've talked about, yes, Nigerians are uh, high-risk takers. They are basically gamblers, a lot of Nigerians, not all Nigerians, because if we look at the figures of the people who have participated, it's still relatively very small compared to those who are involved in regulated schemes. I've just given you yeah. statistics to sh show this, that 213 is nothing compared to what we have in regulated investment products. Now, yes, we have a lot of people who are um, uh, high risk takers and want to gamble their money away. There are a couple of uh, exotic instruments in tradable exchanges or you know, organized exchanges where they can participate and, and then satisfy their urge for high risk ventures. Now the stock, the Nigerian, um, the NGS group have introduced the derivatives market. So they can look at doing playing in futures markets or in derivatives ma products. And that's one of the way they can. And that is regulated, even though you know that it's not a Ponzi, you know the, the risks involved, and you are well aware, well ahead of what the risks are and what the structures are and the, who your counterparties will be. So you're yeah, playing that market. So why not go and do derivatives? You can boost and enhance your earnings doing derivatives trading. Now, if if um, most of the victims, I will say most of the victims are people who hitherto may have been money market players, and the, in in recent times the money market has been quite repressive, given the policy actions of the money of the, of the monetary policy committee in a situation where um, the returns are negative, the real returns from most of or almost all money market instruments are negative when compared to inflation. So that could have been a driver to that. But there are other, um, but if you want to stay close to inflation re adjusted returns, you could go to the equities market. The equities market have shown that over time that um, they are the surest route to 
wealth creation. But you've got to know how to play it too. Are you playing it for long term? Are you playing it for capital appreciation? Everybody, anybody who is going to play in the capital market mm -hmm. must have a long term posture, must have a long term horizon. Because I can buy a stock today, for example, at 10 naira, tomorrow it falls to like 9 naira. What is important in the equities market is your time in the market. So you must time it? No, not, not timing. Okay. You can, nobody duration? can properly. Your duration in the market. Okay. Your duration in the market, if you bought fundam fundamentally strong stocks and you are in the market for seven years, it's not likely that you will be. Uh, you will not have made significant returns over the years. But the thing also, which I said at the beginning of the show, is that you must have financial information. Which I said, ignorance, ignorance is expensive. Yes. So you must, you can't play the equities market when you don't want to be familiar with numbers, when you don't want to get conversant with <coughs> basic arithmetic, and you don't want to study and read annual reports. All quoted companies present their performance report every three months for the public to review. Okay, we are actually going to is since you brought it to the capital market now. It's not just the capital market. I will yes, say the capital yes, market is yes. all and so I have in you. Yes. But if you, if you, but it's, like I said, for investment mm -hmm. purposes, anybody who wants to play investment, I say he's doing investment, must have a long term posture. And when you have that long term posture, there are instruments in the long term posture that can give you if ad inflation adjusted uh, returns that can preserve your money. So why not look at bonds? Why not look at long-term bonds? So why must you do money market instruments? Why not look at equities? Why not even look at the um, um, regulated e commodity exchanges like AFEX? And in the past three to five years, the, the um, return trend from commo agri commodity exchange traded products have um, hovered around 33 percent. Okay. Um, I don't know why I'm still drawn to this capital market investing, but I could do that on another show because that's a, a different ball game. We won't be able to delve into it, so be on the lookout for that. I will do investing in the capital markets, what you need uh, to know. But if we take a look at the role of le regulators, do you think that regulators have really been up to the minute in terms of regulating? I is there also a failure of regulation? I think from 20, 20, 2018 that the regulators have been awesome. They've been doing very well. They've won the market or the investing public about the activities of these Ponzi operators. In fact, over two years, before MBA, MBA Forest crashed, SEC won the investing public over two years before the market, before they crashed. So you cannot say that the SEC has not been alert to their responsibilities. So I think we are, we are now having a market that is better regulated, that, that, is, um, that is doing the primary purpose of of the regulation, which is to protect the investor. Mm. So I, 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 I concur that the SEC has been doing very well in trying to protect Should them. they do more? Yeah, they Because it's not also about writing press releases. Uh, the, the, the where I think they can do more is in a, um, um, financial awareness, financial knowledge awareness, more education uh, sponsored activities. So SEC could, should do more to sponsor programs like this or sponsor um, uh, uh, literacy programs also in schools, especially in, to catch the young guys early and teach them about investing and in, in personal finance tips and all that, so that they, they will be aware of how these things work, so that when somebody comes and sells a snack or you to them, they will be able to know that this is mm -hmm. fake. Okay. So as an uh, investor education, because you did talk about earlier financial literacy uh, programs and I've been trying my best, but I think I would need to do more in terms of financial <laughs> literacy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, programs. Investor education for pe people that Nigerians that are listening right now, what and what should they take away? You know, I know you've said it's, but are there other things that they can take away very quickly? You know, as as reg uh, regarding investors' education, yeah, the, the, or yeah. in, in information around finance or what have you. They should do more to learn about finance at, and as much as possible, be curious, possibly get financial mentors, listen to programs like this, um, um, subscribe to um, um, investment and finance related newsletters and magazines, read uh, books and magazines, newspapers like Business Day, uh, follow investment focus individuals on social media platforms, ask questions, ask questions, and keep asking questions. Don't be shy to ask questions. Yeah. If you don't know, ask. 
Yeah, Seek to know at all times. Yeah, because what you don't know might hurt you. Yeah. This this one. And in my place there's a there's a proverb, Onye na juadi juadi e fuzo. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> Which is someone that asks questions doesn't miss road. So if you don't know the road, just ask, you know, ask questions. Thank you very much, Okudili, for coming on the show. It's my pleasure. I I I, I know we will do more of this, really. You've given me that challenge. Let's let's do more of it. All right, I've been speaking with um, Okudili Ewu, who is the senior vice president at uh, Kari Asset Management. I hope you've taken a few tips, or if not all the tips, so that you can avoid being a victim of a Ponzi scheme. This is a show that you really need to watch and rewatch and rewatch again. You can go on our uh, YouTube channel, Moneyline with Nancy TV. Uh, this program definitely will be uploaded in the next few minutes, I guess, after uh, we end now. Share it across your platforms. Share it across your family members, your friends, so that they don't fall prey to this. The world is enough for the wise. I am Nancy Naji. Be the best you can be and be the change that you want to see. I'll see you all again tomorrow for the Friday edition. Well, bye for now. <laughs>